Hello, boomers! Okay, well, you can do better than that, I'm sure. Hello, boomers! Much better. All right, who's as high as I am? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so a little temperature check. Who here likes music? Okay, so that's about 70%. 30% of you are dead inside. Uh, so we have a treat, and we're deciding to do like a duo hosting thing, like the Eurovision, you know, keep it tacky. Like the Oscars. Like the Oscars. So this is Anu. Hi, everybody. And we have a treat for you. We do indeed. So yeah, firstly, thank you so much to all of you beautiful boomers for being here with us today. Uh, it's going to be a couple of very inspirational speakers that are going to be taken to the stage over the next uh, couple of hours. Um, and they're going to be in sync with today's liminal theme of music, technology and art. Um, beginning uh, with Rui Gato, the amazing Rui Gato, whose talk on the sacred geometry of music is also in perfect sync with this year's boom theme of sacred geometry. Uh, and I'm sure the knowledge that he will be imparting will be both fascinating and enlightening for you all. Um, as, we t as together we explore the uh, magic of invisible formations such as the uh, Fibonacci sequence. So he's going to be here very shortly on the stage, isn't well, that right? It, we, we, we're kicking off, so kicking I off. would love... He's actually here. A super... Live and direct. Warm, loud applause for Rui Gato, the Sonic Magician. <laughs> Okay, so first I would like to thank, give a big warm thank you to Boom, Boom Festival for give me, giving me the, the opportunity to be here uh, to show you guys something that I love, which is uh, music and geometry together. Um, I've been working um, with music since, I don't know, since I was a kid. Uh, I studied a bit of, geom uh, of um, architecture um, and then I, I dedicated myself to music and since, I don't know, maybe three years ago I started to, to, to study sacred geometry and uh, that kind of started the process in me which was, hmm, if I, I already know how to do music with computers and, and to produce music and uh, I can actually try to link geometry to music, maybe, maybe that's a good idea. So I started to devise a, a system uh, and after maybe some time, uh, I don't know, maybe six months or something, um, I presented um, the first outcome of that system uh, here at Boom 2016 uh, at the Chill Out. Okay, so yeah, uh, I would like to, first I would like to give you a little bit of context here, uh, I'm using Touch Designer. Touch Designer is a, is a software that allows to code in visual manner. So how many, how many of you guys work with uh, coding or programming, some kind of coding? Oh, cool. Yeah, lots of them. Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, and uh, of course, there are also music producers here, right? How many of you produce music? More, yeah, okay, okay, that's nice. So yeah, so um, I, I'm going to present here on this platform, which is actually the UI for Touch Designer. And um, yeah, first I would like to, to, to show you a bit, um, just, just the beginning uh, of the, um, oh, sorry, just need to do here one setting, sorry for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, so let's just uh, see a little bit of the, the performance in the shield out, so you guys can kind of feel what's the, the, the system outcome. Uh, it's the first iteration of it, and then after that, I will give you a little bit of theory uh, behind it. So a little bit of uh, theory about sacred geometry and music, my view of it, of course. Uh, and then after that, I will demonstrate the system um, using it uh, here live, okay?
So for that, let's keep on touch designer and get into this box. And okay, so you guys are familiar, maybe are familiar with the old liberal art, the seven old liberal art, uh, which the quadrivium is part. The quadrivium is a four section, and there's a three section, which is the trivium. The trivium it's the art of thinking well, logic, the art of writing well, grammar, and the art of speaking well, uh, rhetoric. Okay, and those are uh, to deal with truth and beauty. Um, and then the, the quadrivium is to deal with actually action, the, the, the action of doing things. Okay. <laughs> So that it's uh, it's the main inspiration for this work. It's the study of the quadrivium, and um, yeah. So for me, the quadrivium starts with number, uh, but it's not the the number that we are used to. We are used to number as a quantity, number as something that we used to count things, to take uh, I don't know to see how much money you have in the bank, to see how many people is in the room, stuff like that. So. It's not that number. It's the, the more complete notion of number, uh, the, no, the notion that uh, has number as a quality. Okay. So um, if we if we look at a series of, of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, it's kind of boring, right? It's just adding. Okay. But if we look at it as a series of shapes, it starts to gain qualities. Okay. So one could be a circle. Two could be a line, three could be a triangle, and so on and so forth. So that type of approach, it's kind of essential for, for, for the logic of translating music to geometry through number. So in, in nowadays, I think number is pretty much dealt with uh, computers and, and logic and Programming, okay. Um, we can also deal symbolically, sim symbolically with number, and we can try to. Uh, I don't know. In all cultures, there are, there are different ways of, of looking at numbers, uh, numerology, astrology, and so on and so forth. Uh, take different visions for each numbers, but it's also interesting in terms of art and in terms of expression to think about number in that way. So that's kind of quick approach to number. Then geometry, which is for me number in space. So you got number, and then if you kind of put number around you, you, you get geometry. So kind of you, you, you kind of can look at reality around you and, and feel the emission of form of geometries as a sequence of numbers, as a as orderly uh, arranged space of, of numeric information. So if you see number in space. As a geometry as number in space. Um, yeah, it's tri-dimensional tri space, of course. It can also be bi-dimensional space, if you want to think about it that way. I chose to work bi-dimensionally here on this work because three-dimensionally is kind of too complex for me right now to code and to deal with. So this system is based on bi-dimensionally shapes, okay? But yeah, that's geometry. But why, why is it sacred? Why do we, do we, we, we say, okay, we're dealing with sacred geometry? Why? Why is it, it's not geometry only? In fact, it was geometry only for a long time. Uh, and uh, after a while, when we start to deal with uh, maybe, I don't know, industrial revolution, maybe a little bit before, uh, we started to quantify everything and we, we started to think about number without the qualities and uh, geometry as something that is utilitary and in, in not something that is in your life, it is uh, all around you. So we, we started to segment our knowledge and uh, that broke the sacred side of geometry and uh, we got the, the, the urge to add sacred to the name of geometry. It doesn't need sacred, it's already sacred with, without the sacred. But uh, one of the reasons I think it's, it can be called sacred it's because it's it's kind of universal, right? Uh, as long as as 
we are talking about uh, intelligent life, like, I don't know, I, I think I have never talked to aliens, but <laughs> if, if, uh, if I will be able to talk to aliens some, somewhere in the future, maybe geometry will be a good starting point. Who knows? Because whatever you are in the universe, a circle is always a circle. It's not a symbol, right? It's not, it's not that uh, a circle, a triangle, and a square have in, hidden knowledge in, in them. They don't have. They, they are just a circle, just a square, and just a triangle. They're just one, three, four. So it's kind of perfect for a direct language, right? So yeah, I think that's one of the reasons. Um, a second reason would be it's because it's, it's intrinsic to life. So we can observe it in nature all, all, all around us. You can, you can look around and you can see, yeah, it's geometry, geometry, geometry. You, you just open an apple and there's, there's a five-pointed star inside, right? That's, that's kind of direct. It's a, yeah, cactus. It's beautifully arranged in, in geometrical fashion. Sunflowers. And this, I don't know what this is, but this is it's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and um, I like I like these fades. Have always used geometry to express themselves. Also, uh, mostly in the most the most amazing structures that we have done, right? Um, like. This is kind of maybe one of the possible generations of this rose window. But yes, that's, that's another reason for me that, oops, uh, ah, yeah, it entails knowledge of all human cultures, okay? So across all time periods of, of non-civilization. So you got like the Vastu Shastra, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, it's a very interesting system. Uh, of making architecture, um, uh, mostly in the India, Cambodia, um, and it, it's it's kind of a, a set of rules and observation from nature uh, that defines uh, constructions. You got uh, Feng Shui, of course. You got sacred geometry uh, in the West, mostly from the old uh, philosophers. Maybe before that, Egypt. It's difficult to track in time. But it's kind of the same information all around. It's not kind of different. You got Islamic patterns and so on and so forth. There's this kind of spread around culture, around human culture, this uh, type of information that generated uh, lots of incredible structures, right? Here in Portugal, there is like this amazing cromlech. Uh, uh, I don't know if in English it's the same word. It's like a megalithic structure. Um, called Almendres in Evora. It's huge, huge, very big. Um, and um, you got, of course, Gobeki Tipi, which uh, I think there's a talk here on this stage about it. Not sure if, if it has, it has done, uh, been already. And uh, Angkor Wat, of course. These are just examples. Giza, Chad. Okay, so kind of quick overview of the geometry part and why it's sacred for me and uh, and yes and how to link it with music so music you all know music you know it's vibration it's sound it's uh, it's kind of life force for for some of us of course and the way I'm looking at it in this system it's in a Pythagorean way, Pythagorean, Pythagorean way. So it's kind of like the division of the string. You have one string, and if you pluck it, it gives you a tone, okay? And if you divide it in the middle, it will give you an overtone of that, uh, and so on and so forth. So you, you, you get like different scales, uh, actually not a scale, but different tones that go by proportion. So this is kind of the way that I'm, I'm looking at at, uh, at music on this system. There are other ways, of course. This image is from John Coltrane. Um, he, I, I discovered this not too long ago. He had a system uh, to make music with uh, with geometry. Um, 
it's a different system than the one that I'm, I'm using here. Mine is based directly on the, the proportion of shapes. This is based on the distribution of nodes around shapes. So it's a different way. But of course, there is no perfect and direct, direct way to, 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 do, to do this, because what I'm trying to do here is, is something that is a little strange, because we, it's space domain into time domain, okay? So it's geometry into music. So there is no straight path for that. There's lots of possibilities. And um, what keeps me uh, searching on one direction is the results that I'm going to try to explain to you after. So and there's also, of course, cosmology. Cosmology, which is number in space and time. It's also a big inspiration for this work. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I, I need to, to focus on, on, on the actual system of, that I want to explain to you. But yeah, but preparing the mind for receiving light, luck and happiness is the real purpose of cosmology. This for me is kind of a very interesting um, note uh, to think about cosmology in this system. Um, it's kind of, I would say, the more poetic side uh, of, of, uh, of the quadrivium. The way that we can connect between number, space, time and then and actually microcosmos and, 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 and the, the cosmos, the macrocosmos, okay? So, yeah, that's kind of the introduction for, for the theoretical, uh, theoretical introduction. And um, yeah, now maybe we, we jump to, to a more practical side, uh, doing some music, yeah? Okay. Do, do you have any questions about this this part, or maybe on the on the the practical? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So let's go. So let me share. I have an iPad here with a, with an interface that I've done to, to control the, um, the the actual system. So my interface looks like this. Um, this has lots of different little buttons and stuff. It's not so complicated as it seems. I'll try to explain <laughs> to you guys. It has different layers that do the same thing, so six different layers. You notice that while I was, I was demonstrating the, the video for, from two years ago, there are different colors, right? Uh, that's kind of a code for each layer. Each layer has a color, so they all do the same thing. The, the fun functionality is the same. Um, and I can control um, on the on the left side. You can see basic controls of the geometry. Okay, so um, I can see I, I can I can I can use uh, number of copies to add different copies of of the same geometry like this. So now we have a square and one copy of a square. Okay. Um, but I can change it from a square to a triangle, for instance, using using this feather here, a number of copies, okay? So this is the, a line, it's the, the most basic representation of geometry. I can speed it up, and you can see every time it crosses the line, the, the green line, it makes the sound, okay? So if I scale it, it will give a higher tone. Okay. Now I'm scaling it, and it's going up, right? I can actually go down and give a low tone, not so low. <laughs> Try to give yeah, like this. This is this. a little bit more volume. Okay, what else can I do with this? Well, let's jump to a triangle again. Step it up. <coughs> and now I'm going to add copies, okay? This is the basic part. Let me just try to show you the interface at the same time. So, more copies. <laughs> can change the speed a bit. 
I can change the angle between the copies, okay? One of the methods I use to compose is just to fiddle around with the geometry like this in a friendly manner. There is, of course, because geometry has its own music, the system is about that. There is, of course, a set of ranges and, and scales and angles that give harmony by number. So, one of the ways to deal with that is to use um, the subdivision of the circle in terms of angle and the subdivision of the proportion or size in terms of scale. So let me show you that. Let, let's get back to one triangle like this. And now I'm going to add a second triangle which is the double size of this one. Okay. and I'm going to rotate it in a way that it will fit outside this triangle. Okay, so I want to show you guys this before going to, into more complex stuff because this kind of demonstrates the proportional coherence between music and geometry. Okay, what we have here is the ratio between the internal triangle and the, the, out, the outer triangle is two. It's double, okay? That's the ratio for triangles when they grow. We can keep on growing them and it's always two, okay? And musically, what you are listening is an octave, okay? So it's also doubling musically, okay? So this is what makes this system, for me, work in, the terms, in terms of harmony, okay? Because it's, uh, it's connected, the music and the, and the, and the shape are connected. So, right now we are listening to the harmony of three, okay? We can listen to the harmony of four and see what happens, okay? Let's do that. Let's change to a square and now use the settings of growth of a square. It's different, right? A little bit more... The triangle is completely octave, it's basic. The square, a little bit more... I don't know, a bit squarey. <laughs> right? Now let's see five. Ah, nice. Five is nice. Very harmonic. Weirdly harmonic, but very harmonic. Now let's go to six. Even more harmonic, somehow, but kind of fixed, but very harmonic also. Okay, I, I, I could go on explaining you guys this. this um, whoa, what was it? Uh, this progression, but you, you get an idea, right? It's like harmony from growth of geometry. Um, let me give you just another view of this concept, but now with tessellation. Tessellation is a concept that was very, very well um, developed in the sacred geometry in the, in the Islamic world. They are like great masters in tessellation. And um, it's like um, the way of spreading uh, a pattern um, of spreading a pattern of geometry, right? So let's use a triangle and tessellate it like this. This is kind of the same thing that you, s you saw with the growth, but it's a different process. But the thing about this process is that I can change the triangle to a square or whatever and you can see the result directly. So let's do that. Different arm. 
70s now. Again, the same pattern of harmony in a different way. Seven is amazing because it's, it's always a door to something else, it's never stable, it always leads to something else. Eight, very static. Yeah, you get an idea, right? Um, so this is kind of the basic settings that, that can modulate the geometry. And now for a little bit of more advanced settings that are on this side here, this one's here, uh, maybe I'll just scale this a little bit down. So, the first one would be fractal. Fractal, it's a, it's a concept for giving more detail for the geometry, right? So, here in this system, uh, so, add more points, okay? And now we have this kind of Melody, not harmony anymore. But I like to we can tessellate it, which is interesting. We can mix together different techniques. crazy thing and generate particles this is not actually geometry this is just a crazy a crazy idea <laughs> okay forget the particles um, what else can we do we can we can delete delete parts of the geometry okay delete points specific points we can say okay in every three points I want one point deleted and that give us different non-regular geometry that in music could be interesting. That's not the main point of this system. This system, the main point of it is to extract directly from geometry music, but lots of the time, because it's a great tool to compose actually, lots of the time it's useful to have these little tricks. Um, and and the, the, delete, the deletes or the deletion of the points could be random or could be sequ sequential. Now I'm just applying ram randomness to it. Okay, that's another trick. Yeah, and the, for me the most interesting ones are uh, the modulus and the alt step. These two little guys here. Um, let me try to explain first what they do. The modulus is a very Pythagorean concept. It's it's like you have a triangle or imagine, I don't know, five triangles the same size. Let's do that. Five triangles the same size. Like this. And now I'm going to apply modulus. And modulus will say for every triangle uh, I will distribute it either in half, so one big triangle, one half one big, one half, something like that. Or I can use modulus three and it will be uh, full size, two thirds, one third of a size, and so on and so forth. This, for me, was a big, big discovery on this system because of the harmonic results. So this is modulus two, just plain um, octave, okay? Now modulus three. Modulus four. I'm just going to add a different instrument. A little piano just to, to bring up the harmony. And now mod modulus five. It's harmony directly from geometry, okay? I'm not doing the chords. Model 6. It's kind of dramatic, the progression, right? Model 
seven, very harmonic. Models eight, more dark a little bit. Models nine, a bit open, right? And now back to three. And we can do progressions, okay? Okay, the last one, it's Alt Step. Alt Step is very similar to Modulus, but it, you can actually define the division of, of, of proportion, okay? So, I can say, okay, um, Fibonacci. Now I'm applying the golden proportion, okay? And I can add models to that. It adds complexity. Okay. And now let's jump to the square root of two, which is actually the the square, the diagonal of the square. Okay. And now the square root of three. And now let's go up. Okay. So what else? Yeah, intersections, of course. Intersections is also interesting. So we can generate points in the intersecting geometry. Let's just adjust. change the angle of the geometry, it will give us different harmonies. This one's a bit strange. I don't use it too much. Okay, so that's for brief demonstration. Do you got any questions about this side, uh, this part practical control of the geometry that you want to know directly? Yeah, one question there. Go ahead. S sorry, can can you use the microphone? Yes, yes, I can. Number seven, uh -huh. which is a prime number. Yeah. Um, is it a, co a coincidence that the well, prime number sounds better? Or that's a good question, actually. <laughs> it's probably it, not a coincidence. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, for example, if you apply um, prime numbers to, for example, hashing functions uh -huh. uh, in programming, yeah. yeah, it gives you a better um, disposition. Uh, uh, you can see it, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's more. Um, you have everything spaced. Mm -hmm. um, more evenly, maybe. Yeah, more evenly, yeah. I will investigate that, definitely. Yes, yes. It will be on the, on the, on the further development. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah? Uh, can you please explain a bit more about this human not is this interface that you're using and how it's connected to Ableton? Is are you using some actual live device for that? The, yeah. Well, no. This is uh, here the iPad. I'm sc I'm I'm just um, sc um, sharing the screen of the iPad, and it's a software called Lemur. Uh, Lemur, like like the lemur, the, the animal, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, it it can, it kind of allows you to build your own interface. So you built this all interface by yourself? Yes, 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 yes. I, I built it to control the geometry. <laughs> okay, so now maybe maybe before more questions, if you have more questions, I, I will ask again after after a few more demonstrations. Uh, now I will jump into maybe two or three practical uses, okay? And um, while I'm demonstrating them, I will comment, and you, if you guys want to know something about a specific point, you can just say, and I will lower the volume and explain, okay?
So let's start with um, uh, yeah, this one. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to do a little progression first with this. Actually, the interface is done for, it's made for composition. It can be used for performance also. I think it's a bit too complicated for performance. I will probably do a simpler one to do performance, uh, but it can be used for performance. Now I'm just launching scenes on Ableton. The scenes have the information, not music, okay? So there's no sound recorded in Ableton, just information that generates the geometry, and then the geometry sends MIDI into, into Ableton that generates the sound, okay? Change in the harmony. 
Five is a bit more delicate, somehow, like a flower, somehow like that. show you some more some more examples now for uh, a different approach so this approach was based on the geometry I, will, uh, I was how I, I was telling you guys now for approach in the more sound design oh, sorry sound design uh, approach kind of I wanted to reach uh, a specific um, harmony uh, actually you guys know 2001 right the movie uh, you know the also Sprat uh, Zaratustra from Strauss, the opening titles. Da, 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 you know that, yeah. <laughs> so I was doing this work for a friend of mine, which is an artist, and then um, he, he asked me to do the sound design for for uh, the, the piece, the, actually the sound art, and uh, and I said, okay, what's the theme? Think about 2001. Okay. Okay, so I, I put the movie and I did some experimental stuff with analogic um, synthesizers and, and geometrical music. And after that, it was very, very weird, the, the output, but I, I like it very much. Very, not, not harmonic like this, very glitchy, very, very noisy, but, but, but interesting. And after that, I thought, hmm, maybe it would be interesting to, to kind of make a cover or try to, to, to make something like 2001 opening titles. And then I did this. So I want to show you guys this approach, which is a, a different, different approach.
Okay, now for a different example. Um, this one is from uh, recent installation, sound installation, uh, actually audiovisual installation I did. It's, um, it's a set of geometry uh, that has the possibility to be observed as it is, or you can interact with it, with your body. So it's a development of the system into a more open relation with the, with the audience. So um, I didn't bring the, the sensor that allowed to do that here today. Uh, sorry guys, it would be fun, but I think we don't have too much time for, for, for that. But I will show you some of the geometries that, uh, that, uh, that were, were used. Interpretation of five. The installation it kind of generatively grows.
more spacey, right? It's for insulation. between different shapes in the middle in the middle of the connection there's a new point that generates a new note okay so this is a development a, a new development it's kind of recent and in terms of generative it's very interesting because every time because they rotate at different speeds right the two shapes so every time the middle point crosses the green line, it's at a different height. So it generates this kind of melody that you are listening right now. From two regular constant shapes. of 5 in 8 it's solved with the Euclidean uh, algorithm so 4 in 8 is very is very simple to fit you you get 4 you get 8 so you put 1 and you don't put 1 here and put 1 here don't put 1 here don't put 1 here don't put 1 here I don't know if I'm making sense for you guys but it's kind of 4 is easy to fit on, on 8 okay 5 it's very difficult because it's not regular way of fitting into it. Okay, so the Euclidean rhythm, uh, the, the Euclidean algorithm solves that, but gives us non-regular shapes, and that's kind of the basis from almost all native rhythms in the world. You can describe them in, with Euclidean uh, algorithm. Almost all of them are. are, are based on that kind of fitting of 3 into 7, 5 into, into 6, and so on and so forth. So, this shape in the middle, it's, it's, it's using a Euclidean. Uh, it actually, it's 12 into 7. You can, you can see it here. So, the number of the shape original is 12, and with Euclid on, I'm forcing it into 7, okay? that gives us this rhythm. I can change and force it into five, like this. You see, now it's five-pointed, non-regular, also Euclidean rhythm, or into nine. Also different rhythm. So this is the part of the system that I haven't explored too much yet, but it's also very useful for rhythm. Just one more example. If I have time, I think so. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this that I, I did uh, some months ago. Um, it's just uh, well, 
I think it's nice for you guys to, to, to listen to it. So it's not too different from, from the rest, uh, what I've shown you guys. But, uh, it's, it's, it's nice. you guys are aware but uh, there is a dance between uh, Venus and Earth that is very very beautiful in terms of geometry so I think it's every eight years it completes the dance is completed and um, I think I have the, the image yeah it's, it's this image here um, this is what it generates in terms of if you trace the middle point between the two planets while they are traveling. So I kind of tried to replicate that. That was actually the inspiration for, for the middle point thing that you, you guys were seeing uh, previously. So I kind of tried to replicate that on this system. Let's just connect. Okay, so imagine that one is Earth, the other one is Venus. Okay, and we are listening to Venus and Earth every time it passes the green line and the middle point also. And we are tracing it. give us the melody. <laughs> so here one note, here another, another one there, another there. And now it's completed. Now it's repeating again. So it's kind of a cycle of eight years. It has a little offset. It's not perfect. There are no perfect cycles, cycles in nature, I think. It's, they are always modulating, right? So it has, it's always a little imperfection. Okay, so this is my last example. I'm open for questions. You guys want, want to, to ask something? Yeah, yeah, here, there. Is there a mic? It goes back to the beginning. Uh -huh. I didn't turn this through. The, the, the relationship about the, the size of the yeah. the figure and the, the harmonic series. If yeah. you double the size, it's an octave. Yeah. And then you you got uh, like if you go to the harmonic series, you got the fifth. How did you? It's is it's that the 
the well it's it's more like more like this um you got like um proportion is the key for the translation here so um the thing is i'm not thinking about it in terms of musical uh, characteristics i'm thinking about it in terms of geometrical characteristics so the keys for my research when i'm i'm trying to 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 develop the system the first one is this one is, is proportion okay so I, i try to have a ratio uh, that kind of fits in both outcomes so the doubling of the geometry size should generate an octave and if i double th that again should ge generate a second octave okay so the system is tuned to that and that allows me to after that by dividing the octave in equal parts using the harmonic series get the results of the notes more um, close to the harmonic series because one part of the research that is still not developed it's the sonic part all the sounds that you are listening to is midi right it's synthesizers that are tuned to 12 uh, equal tempered uh, system western system right so I, i'm going to have to apply the same logic um, in terms of proportion to frequencies to get the more pure results that that's for sure Thank you very much. Okay. More questions? Go ahead. So, hi. Uh, Hello. Uh, I didn't get the actual relation between Ableton oh, and yeah. the Touch Designer. So, what's, what um, does each one okay. search for? And okay. Why? Uh, I'll, show, I'll show you that. Uh, so, Ableton is used as a sequencer of parameters uh, that control the geometry, okay? So right now, for this example that we are listening to, I have these two layers, the yellow and the, the orange layer, and the, on the yellow layer I have a clip slot, and on that clip slot I have a bunch of parameters that are the same parameters that are here on my interface, okay? So basically, what I do is, is um, sorry for, <laughs> sorry, okay. What, what I do is uh, I just generate the geometry here on the, on the, on the lemur, and then I snapshot it on the, on the live, okay? And then I send the values into Touch Designer to generate the geometry. And then, after that, I will show you the, the inside of the, of the system, if you want to, to see. Um, it's a bit like crazy, like going down the rabbit hole, but it's, it's nice for people who like to code, it's visual code. So what happens is, these are the parameters that are coming from, from Ableton, and um, those parameters generate the geometry here. It's a bit complex. <laughs> And that geometry gets modulated in these boxes here. So every box get, it's a different modulation of the geometry. And then goes out from here and goes into this box with, which applies a transformation. So it applies the rotation to the geometry. Okay? And after that transformation it goes into this box which analyzes the points in terms of Cartesian space and, to, to, and sends them into polar space. So polar space is like the distance between, between the center and, the, and the, the maximum. And after that, it goes into Ableton through a script of Python uh, that sends the notes uh, into Ableton. So it's, a, it's kind of crazy. But it works. <laughs> More questions? 
Uh, sorry, sorry. Hello. Yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to say how fascinating your work is. I, I made a similar but far less def, uh, far less efficient system uh, last year for like based on noise, uh -huh. visual noise for uh -huh. a planetarium project, cool. and it was the same kind of controls but just not as clean. Mm -hmm. But um, thank you for making such a beautiful example of like the wonders thank of you. mathematics. I find it really, really um, amazing. Um, but, you, you mentioned previously um, about how you had looked into Pythagorean, uh, Pythagorean yeah. stuff, and obviously he makes the relationship between uh, light and sound, uh -huh. and of course the harmony of the spheres and stuff. But what do you think is the the kind of key to translating light and sound into like a common medium through mathematics? Because everything in mathematics is uh, it's very exact and pure in the way it fits together, but light waves and sound waves are different things, but can we tie it together? Yeah, well, that's a very good question, thank you for that. Uh, actually, well, when, 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 when we deal with, um, with the physical reality, right, because the quadrivium is uh, completely focused on, 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 on the intellect, right, but it's fundamented on nature, on nature observation. And I think our, our biggest challenge is to make that connection, exactly. How to connect back from, from the intellect to the source, right? Because we can observe the way that the source came, goes, goes from nature and from, from, from reality into our intellect. It's easy for us to do that, but the opposite, it's, it's more difficult, right? How can we go from the intellect to, 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 the, to the active world, to the manifestation, right? Um, and um, yeah, um, light, sound, vibration, it's all vibration, right? I think Pythagoras and, and much more think about that in a continuum way. So um, it's, it's useful to make this division for us to deal with it, right? But it's all the same. It's all the same field. So, um, using that knowledge, I think observating, it's like the, the, the key. We, we need to observe nature, to, to look how nature works, and then try to replicate the, the, the same system uh, in the way that we create, so we can co-create with it. I think that, I'm not sure if, if I answered your question. Yeah, kind of. So in the same way that touch design and Ableton feed back into each other simultaneously, yes. we yes. need that between our intellect of the moment and the source, but yes. in sync. At the yes, to be in sync. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very yes. much. Thank you for your question. Well, uh, I'm actually, I, I don't know how to code in text-based coding, more efficient code. This touch designer is amazing for prototype, for fast prototyping, for artists, um, but um, it's not so good for distributing, right? Because you need to know a little bit of touch designer to use it. But uh, I'm, I'm getting this system ready as it is to be distributed. I, I'm going to open it and to, and to, and to distribute it to, to anyone who wants to use it. So if you guys are, are interested, to use it, you, you, you can use it in the future. Yeah. Hopefully near, near, near future, okay? I'm just getting the things ready so, so I, can, I can send it to, to the world, yeah. Not VST, unfortunately. Hello. What about the ability to export, say, an OBG for use in Maya or Photoshop, etc.? Um, but what kind of use? Like visualization? So, say you compose a track with this geometry yeah. and you want to do some sort of visualization uh -huh. a little bit, you know... Yeah, with the same with geometry, yeah. Software Definitely like yes. That. Definitely yes. You can you can do that on Touch Designer, actually. Yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of an export function. And it can export to... It, it can export to OBG, uh, FBX, nice. ABC. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite easy. Awesome. To do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, still one there. It's kind of going like this. <laughs> 
Yeah, as uh, others have mentioned, uh, great work, Willie. Um, Thank you. It's awesome. I've also done some research in the subjects, actually. Uh -huh. And um, uh, one pretty interesting thing, I think, is actually uh, psychedelic trance or Goa trance. Yes. Uh, with a certain um, beats per minute. Uh -huh. uh, because I discovered that cymatics, uh, we humans, we, we consist of water mostly, as you know, and actually there is a resonance uh, that hurts, like a fre uh, frequency. Yes. Um, so actually we can kind of like dance and create those kind of patterns yes. inside yes. ourselves yes. in our human body, and that's for real. It's Definitely, yes. stuff, really. I, w I, so, I want to, to, to bring my, my, my research in that direction. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, but I'm kind of a bit, bit nervous talking about this because no problem. I've been working for it for like one year and I've okay. been spoken about it yet, so uh, just mentioning it, it's kind of cool stuff really, uh, just think. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, one of the things I think this will end up, it's probably healing, you know, because it's totally connected with what you're saying. Uh, Actually, we are, we are yes. made of water, right? Okay. And we vibrate internally. So one of the possibilities is to kind of research geometries that are useful for our body. But for that, I, I will need first to investigate the frequencies, the correct frequencies, because what we are hearing, hearing is just like a piano, okay? It's not the correct frequencies yet. But I can extract directly from the geometry the frequencies. So that will be further down the line, yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, and let's yeah. talk because uh, uh -huh. actually uh, there is frequencies for that, and I can, okay, I've researched some about cool, it. Cool, so. cool. Let's talk about it. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> yeah. We're in back. Where? Where? Can you wave? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hi. First of all, this is really freaking awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I've been really interesting in this as well, uh, just as a, as a hobby and. Uh, big interest mm -hmm. and actually totally fits with what's been said before I, I see a really big healing potential in this mm -hmm. um, and ha have you looked into the solfeggio yes. scale of the frequency mm -hmm. yes I haven't made the connection yet um, I've researched the solfeggio um, previously before this this research actually uh, if you listen to my live set of 2014 in, in the chill out, it starts with the solfeggio frequencies actually, uh, just for a little bit of cleansing. Um, so yes, it's very interesting in terms of healing abilities for sure. Yeah, I haven't made a connection with this system yet for for that, but it might be interesting. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Maybe just one more. I don't know. Yeah, last one, uh, last one, maybe here and one more there. Okay, or yeah, last one here. <laughs> yeah. Um, hi. Hello. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but uh, from some sounds, I just got uh, a huge pain here. Okay. Like, um, uh -huh. Maybe from the frequencies, I don't know. Probably but, yes. Yeah. But my, my question was, uh, I was curious to know, uh, why did you choose six layers? Is there any reason why? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I had to choose a number and um, I thought, hmm, maybe it, it, it's interesting to choose... Um, do you know Isaac Newton's uh, experiment with light? When he decomposed light? and he, he spread it one beam of sunlight into seven different beams of color, right? That was seven. But it was into a white surface. And Goethe, do you know Goethe? Um, he did the same experiment, but he, he, he did it on black. And he discovered a new color, which we, we now call magenta, uh, which didn't exist before. Um, and it was only six colors, the result. And I, I don't know why, I thought it was good to, to use that as an inspiration for the layers. So it has no rational connection, it's just inspiration. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you so much. If you have any further questions, 
you can you can come to me and ask me. You can also visit my website. It's this one. Um, I'm I'm here during the whole boom, so you can just come to me and, and ask me some questions. If you, if you find Big round of applause. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>